Hey friends, this is Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous, where we analyze pop culture through the lens of race or gender, and sometimes both. And on today's show, we are diving into the story of Cinderella. It's known that Cinderella was first written in 1634 by an Italian. It's been said to be very loosely based on a true story. And in the 1950s, Disney released a full length animated feature. When I was little, spending summers in the country with my grandparents and cousin, Cinderella was one that was on repeat. The idea of being swept off my feet by a handsome and charming man was so appealing to my small, impressionable mind. And I'm convinced this is where my love for rom-com started, even though Cinderella isn't really a rom-com. My guest this episode is Gabrielle Critchlow. She was here in season four when we discussed Gilmore Girls and Wealthy Women. If you'll recall, she is the founder and operator of A Starting Point, which is a tutoring service. And now, here we go to the show. Gabrielle, welcome back to the show. I'm excited you're here. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. Yeah. For those who don't know, Gabrielle was here in season four and we talked about um, Gilmore Girls and it was a really great conversation. So go back and listen to that one as well. But today, like I mentioned in the intro, we are talking about Cinderella and all things Cinderella. Like I don't know anybody who doesn't know the story of Cinderella. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for this convo. So I want to kick off our conversation with the summary of the 1950s animated version, which is this. And it's from Google because y'all know we get Google. We do the Googles around here. So here we go. With a wicked stepmother and two jealous step- stepsisters who keep her enslaved and in rags, Cinder- Cinderella stands no chance for attending the royal ball. <laughs> when I read that, I was like, um, I mean, I guess that's accurate. <laughs> Since the animated feature was released in 1950, it was actually really hard to find reviews that weren't just like blog posts from the last 10 years. So we're just going to go ahead and dive into our own personal experiences um, with the movie on the show. So my first question is, do you, how old were you when you saw the first version, the original Disney version version of Cinderella? And then do you remember what you thought of it? I want to say I was 10, 11, mm-hmm. so somewhere in a preteen age. Um, I think I was fascinated. I don't know. I, I think I was, because I think about it more now because it's been redone over and over. But It's been redone um, so many times. Like, yeah. it, I, it was, I thought I'd be able to find 1950s Cinderella stuff easy. No. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I think what I remember, I mean, I I don't remember much, but it's, it's, I think I've, like, I felt for Cinderella because of, you know, what the stepmother was doing to her. Mm -hmm. And I think I was thinking of, it was symbolic of my trauma in a way, in that I felt myself projecting my projecting myself into Cinderella or I I was identifying with Cinderella Mm -hmm. and that she was, you know, cast to the side and um, the other sisters were the favorite Mm -hmm. and she wasn't even, you know, like a blood sister. She was the stepsister. So she was disregarded and, you know, treated as a, as a slave, you know, and then they leave, her to go to the ball so she's the one that has to clean up and you know and then a magical being comes out of nowhere and saves her <laughs> you know so yeah. it, I think I I found myself identifying with Cinderella mm-hmm. and that it's you know I felt like the outcast and you know other people were the favorite and I want someone to come and save me mm-hmm and you know I also felt like I didn't belong and um you know I also wanted 
And I love how everything is centered around the one guy, right? You know, I I wanted a, a the, the prince, and so I think it was. I found myself thinking of my own trauma, my own personal mm. issues, and I found myself identifying with Cinderella as the character. So I think, like, I, I was like, I was angry at the stepmother, like, you yeah. know, like, how dare you? Who, who are you? You know, you're taking on someone else's child but yet you know you you felt like the child was a burden yeah and you know that's not fair to the child you know so Mm -hmm. I guess I I felt myself identifying with the Cinderella character and it's reflective of what I was going through at the time and reflected of my my trauma, my insecurities. So mm-hmm. it's like, it's, I found myself being her in a way and just like a, like understanding what she was going through. Yeah. And finding myself angry at the character, even though I'm like, it's just a character, but I found myself angry at the stepmother, angry at the stepsister. Yeah. So. Yeah. They were awful. They are so yeah. like that, like Disney knows how to make a villain. Like that is for yeah. sure. It never it, made sense to me, especially now, especially once I became a single parent, it never made sense to me how someone, and I get it, like, this is a different time period, blah, blah, blah. But I still, I guess I still don't understand to this day how you could partner with somebody who isn't kind to your children and love your children and like you know cinderella's dad is we assume i think the story i think the original very original story is like you know he dies and so she you know the stepmother like takes her on but doesn't want to blah 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 but like regardless of the time period i i don't understand how you would willingly enter in a relationship with somebody who has children and not treat those children well and I hated how her stepmom just like behaved in a way that it was just like I you are trash and this isn't you're not worth my time and it was just like but why like she didn't do anything to you like she deserves love too like love her too so being a very sensitive child that was hard for me (laughs) right and I think you know as you were talking I you know, I was thinking, I don't know if you've heard of the movie The Parent Trap. I love The Parent Trap. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just doing a comparison here of, I mean, she technically wasn't the stepmother, Mm -hmm. but she was the almost stepmother figure, right? And she, you know, she's about to marry a guy with two kids, and the kids don't like her. And I think, well, I think she's mean to them, but then Mm -hmm. she's trying to be nice to them. To, you know to get on the father's side and yeah kids don't like her and then you know and I think they're trying to they do a bunch of tricks to try to get rid of her the stepmom mm-hmm. and you know and the stepmom is like when we get married I'm shipping them off to Switzerland and the father's like no they're staying with me so just thinking about um I think it's another Disney movie the parry trap it is yeah uh, just thinking about the stepmother character and I might be saying something about Disney, like why stepmothers, but um, yeah, right. <laughs> the, the stepmother character, and that you know, she's this evil woman who's coming from outside the family, and she's trying to break up the family because she's trying to get the guy, mm-hmm. right? She's focused on the guy, but not the kids, right? And yeah. so, kind of bringing it back to Cinderella. I mean, there's not a lot of talk about the dad, but. But basically, it sort of works the same way in that, you know, well, we don't we don't really know too much about the dad, but, you know, we have, well, it was the stepmother's family, right? Mm-hmm. So Cinderella is the one on the outside coming in, and, but the stepmother is mean to Cinderella. Yeah. So, which to assume, like, she wanted the her father yeah. for some reason, and... You know, but the father died and and even thinking about it now maybe she's angry that the father died and Cinderella is a reflection of the loss of her husband and so uh-huh. she's her anger that's a good point like you're you're the you know you're 
you're a reflection of those bad memories and so I'm mm -hmm. lashing out at you because mm -hmm. you're a reflection of those bad memories so that could be another perspective to see it but it's it still doesn't justify her actions uh, so I, I was just thinking about you know the evil the the evil stepmother character mm -hmm. um in the parent trap and Cinderella and how the stepmother's trying to get in in parent trap right the evil stepmother's trying to get in with the father and the two kids and Cinderella you know this it's the stepmother's family that's the focus of the story and mm -hmm. Cinderella's the one coming in from the inside so I think there's a there's a recurring theme that's so interesting that Disney's kind of like we hate stepmoms <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just thinking about it now, like, you know, like I was saying, like, in Cinderella, in Cinderella, maybe the stepmother, you know, sees, you know, Cinderella, uh, Cinderella as a, as a reflection of the loss of her husband, and so, mm -hmm. um, and she's projecting her emotions onto her, Yeah, but then she's getting her other two kids, her two biological kids, picking on her as well so yeah it's just a really toxic environment like this yeah. this and then the idea that the stepsisters are also evil and ugly as well mm -hmm. kind of was like in my it, as I get older I realize oh like the evil stepsisters are ugly on purpose or air quotes ugly on purpose because mm -hmm. that's how you you have to if they were beautiful it would if they were also beautiful it would have completely changed the story altogether um but it's just like that concept of like pitting women against each other intentionally like that feels very to me even though I know people are like oh it's just a cartoon it doesn't matter I'm like yeah but that's still kind of harmful because so many people let their small children watch all of these animated features from as you know the time they're little forward and so that's the message that they're receiving is that you know fight with people be be like girls fight this is how women behave with each other and I kind of hate that in adulthood because it's like mm -hmm. I don't know about you but I have really strong relationships with my friends to the point like that's not our dynamic we don't we don't behave that way like we're not in um a position where we're in relationship with people where we're catty and mean I think the term for the modern era is like frenemies like we just don't do that that's just not and maybe it is part of our nature naturally I don't know but like we've actively made the decision like oh if this person i don't like the way they make me feel i don't like the interactions with them so we're just gonna be like why it's not a thing we need this is not a relationship we need to enter into but i think that took deprogramming because we watched so many toxic female relationships and like cinderella is one of them yeah i i think i i saw it a different way oh, okay. um i didn't really see it as toxic female relationships i was focused on the the family relationship mm -hmm. um in that you know you have someone who is not part of your family mm -hmm. but you're forced to raise her or or you chose to raise her or you're forced to raise her or whatever it is but you know but you're forced to raise her but you make her you make her I don't know about slave but yeah I didn't like that make, phrasing yeah evil. but but you make her but you make her a servant right right and and Cinderella just goes with it right so because she doesn't have a choice right I mean I'm assuming she's young right under 18 she's probably a teenager um not enough money mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the if the stepmother was wealthy I'm not sure I think that the I think I always understood it that the, that Cinderella's dad was wealthy and so because she's the widow she sort of by proxy inherits everything. Oh, okay. that's how I always took it. I don't know if that's accurate. And I read Cinderella in a children's literature course I took in undergrad and I literally can't remember anything from it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I was like, oh, I've been indoctrinated by Disney that I can't actually delete the Disney version from my head ever, probably. <laughs> oh, wow. There's been studies on Cinderella. But yeah, okay. So I was, okay. So then let's forgot the wealthy part. But um, 
that's interesting because then she married the guy for the money but then the guy died and she mm-hmm. had to take care of the ch- okay so i guess that makes sense but um but um yeah i was just thinking it more about the family dynamic and yeah. that you know and then the step the step family dynamic in that you have this child that's not yours but you're forced to raise her but you know instead of including her in your circle you make her a servant so that what it that shows what you think of her and what yeah. you think of that and this outsider coming in yeah so you make her a servant and Cinderella has to deal with that because she has nowhere to go. She doesn't know anybody else. Mm-hmm. There's no other family, no aunts, no uncles. And so she just has to deal with it. Yeah. You That's know, hard. So I was thinking about, yeah, I was thinking it more about the family dynamic. Yeah. Not so much women. Yeah, no, I think, but I yeah. think yours is probably more accurate. I don't have step siblings. My parents have been married for a long time. Um, so that's not an experience I know firsthand on my child's father's side of the family. They are a blended family and I, and I do see dynamics there, but it's most, but they weren't small children when the family became blended. Everyone was a teenager when the family blended. So it was, and it was mostly boys and one girl. So it's a little, I don't want to say it's a little different, but that's my that like that's kind of what um my exposure to blended families has been in terms of participation for me because I have friends whose parents you know I have friends who are uh, grew up in blended families but when you're a kid whose parents are married you don't really think about it in that way Mm -hmm. and then once I became a parent and realized I had to navigate that blendedness then I started paying different attention to it I could I imagine though it's probably very different for in childhood compared to like blending in adulthood right because you're you're impressionable like you said Mm -hmm. you're um you're you have you don't really have that much understanding when you're really young Mm -hmm. so and it's a lot to I imagine that it's a lot to adjust to and that your parents divorced and so your world is split in two and you're mm-hmm. going back and forth between addresses and now you know mommy has a new boyfriend mm-hmm. and you know there's a new man in the house now and it's not daddy or daddy has a new girlfriend there's a new woman in the house it's not mommy and and now you have to get to know this new person so you have this new person who's trying to be daddy who's trying to be mommy right and mm-hmm you have to get to know this new person and then all of a sudden and and now that they're married and now you're my new mommy now you're my new daddy now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know and your stepmommy and I have my real mom or your stepdad and I have my real so then it's and then imagine the the step parents they have kids of their own so now it's like here are these new people I don't know and I never, you know, I, now I have to call you brother and sister, but you weren't here before. Right. So like suddenly entered my life and now your brother and sister, I have to call you brother and sister. Mm-hmm. And it's, is a lot, I imagine it's a lot for a child to adjust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Adjust something like that. Yeah. Especially the back and forth. I don't know what that's like. And neither does my child either. You know, it's, we've always been just sort of like, this is our world. I don't know. And I remained single the entire time he was alive because it was just (laughs) too complicated, like for me to try and figure out how to date and also raise human and also go to school and also work. (laughs) (laughs) I am very impressed when people can throw dating in there because I'm like, how y'all have the time? I had papers to write. <laughs> like, <laughs> So I want to jump to the Disney version that was released in 97 that stars Brandy and Paolo Montalban, Montalban Whoopi Goldberg, Victor Garbo, Whitney Houston, Bernadette Peters. Like this movie is stacked. Yeah. And it was the first time... I remember, so 97, I was 13. So it was the first time I remember seeing a princess who wasn't white. And I'm sure, yeah, sure, we could count Jasmine 
Mm. I don't remember when Pocahontas came out. You could count her too if you want to. But like, this is like the princess ideology we have known in the 20th century coming to life in Brandy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and in a review from 1997, we were reminded that the version, this version was based on the Rodgers and Hammerstein version from 40 years earlier, 1957, starring Julie Andrews. But the reviewer argues it's better, but still lacking. And this is what they had to say, quote, Combining Broadway pizzazz with a traditional storybook look, the remake also adds three better Rogers songs not written for Cinderella, including The Sweetest Sounds. And the new version has a social conscious with a multiracial cast and a feminist twist, but it doesn't take the final leap into pure magic. Often charming and sometimes ordinary, this is a cobbled together Cinderella for the moment, not the ages, end quote. And then I thought, I bet this guy regrets saying that because this movie has lasted forever and the internet loves it. Anytime you pull out that Brandy picture of her as Cinderella, people go crazy because it's a cult phenomenon. So I want to talk about this. And if you watched it when it first aired or when when did you first see this version and how like how did it impact you? Or even if you didn't just the like I said, there's like this phenomenon around it that like. I think touches everybody in a way. Yeah, I think I saw it when it first came out. Uh -huh. I think that it really it blew me. I think it blew me away. I think because of because it was Brandy, because it was Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston was oh, she was so oh, she was so beautiful. I was like. Uh, like I, my jaw was like I was just so impressed with the beauty of this film. Sorry, go ahead, keep talking. <laughs> yeah, you're the guest, <laughs> not me. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, and I'm like, it's um, I love the songs, and I mean, I think what shocked me was the multiracial cast. Mm -hmm. Um, but they went all multiracial. It wasn't just like they usually have like the one black person, mm -hmm. but they they didn't even, like they the the man was asian right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they had it was it, it was like it was really multiracial yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and i think uh and it's usually like white and black people and then the, you know but i think that's what threw me blew me away like oh wow there's actually an asian guy but um <laughs> but yeah i i i love the movie i love the take on it and i i they and I think um, they kept, they sort of kept the original, I don't know about the feminine twist. I'm not, I would have to understand. Yeah, I was like, that. I don't remember it being a feminist twist. I remember it being very much true to the Cinderella story. I was like, yeah. um, okay, reviewer, I, what were we doing in 1997 that this felt feminist? <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that was kind of weird. But um I, I think like they kept it they still they kept it true to the mm -hmm. original story. You have the evil stepmother and then you have the the stepsisters. Oh yeah, the stepsisters. I think one was a white woman and one was a black stepsister. So they okay, so I remember that. And then of course Bernadette Peters was white. So Yeah. Yeah, so they, they really like they they I think that's what shocked me the most was like they really went they 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 touched all the diversity boxes um but yeah um i think i watched that movie like over and over again and i love the songs i might actually download the soundtrack actually but anyway um yeah it was you know they stuck to the original theme um but they you know they're still centered around this one guy and and it was Whitney Houston and the pumpkin and the ball. And I, I loved, I know back in the day, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I think it was because it was Brandy, because it was Whitney Houston, uh, because they had those famous people in it. I know I loved it and I watched it like over and over again. Yeah. And I, and I love the songs. I don't even know what else to say about it, but I loved it. <laughs> Thinking about the ending of Cinderella, I think, okay, Cinderella, 
you know, she ends up with the prince, but then what happens to the step parents, right? I think I think kind of it's interesting how I don't it's like Cinderella got her revenge mm -hmm. in a way because she ended up with I'm trying to remember in the original version, she ended up with the prince, but then like she didn't include the step family, right, you know, in her new life. And so they they kept I think they kept up with that theme and now okay, she ended up with the prince and the brandy version and the step family they're trying to claw they're trying to claw and they're trying to claw over the gate so they kept that ending and that you know cinderella felt vindicated mm -hmm. in a way and you know she was like I'm, I'm gonna leave them behind i'm not going to include them so the brandy version i think they maintained the essence of the cinderella story mm -hmm. i remember i loved it i watched it over and over again yeah i loved the music and you know it definitely was star-studded it so, really and they made a was. big deal out of it. Yeah. I remember like the promotion and they made a big deal. <laughs> like Cinderella. Yeah. With Brandy. Like they made a big deal out of the promotion. So like night this movie came out in 97 and Moesha uh premiered in 96. So it was like Brandy had like I think more name recognition at that time too. And yeah. so I think she was a really good choice to play Cinderella. She's so like to this day she's still so beautiful where you're just like girl stop <laughs> when I reflect on it now all these years later when I think about like Bernadette Peters people it's like objectively people say Bernadette Peters is talented right and then objectively people say Whitney Houston has a really powerful and amazing voice and then I think what's so great about this film is that you put them both in it Ber uh, Bernadette Peters is the stepmother Brandy is or excuse me Whitney Houston is the fairy godmother and you really get to see like if entertainment was an even playing field and you really did have equity in the entertainment industry I feel like you would see more partnerships or more casts with such talent as this because like Whitney Houston as the fair it was like watching her as the fairy godmother it was just like yes please come to my house now too whereas like the one from the 50s the cartoon it really wasn't for me that it, it was like oh magical I love it we're gonna you know whatever but and even in the newer one when Billy Porter plays the fairy god what do they call him in the new one with Camilla Cabello they don't call him a fairy godmother. They call him a fairy god something. I forget what it is. Even in that one, I was like, okay, Pilly Porter, you can come, you can come fix my life too. Like, there's something about Whitney Houston coming in and just being like, here's all this magic for you that just felt so much more magical than the Dude. animated version to me. And it was just so like, this is what I want. I want magic. <laughs> Where's my magic? <laughs> Well, I'm not familiar with the Billy Porter version. I didn't it's even know new. That it was. came out. Yeah, it came out like in 2021, I think. And it started. I know there was. Um, I think there was the Angelica Houston one. Yeah, she did. That one was called Ever After with yeah. Drew Barrymore. Why aren't why isn't Billy Porter showing up? There he is. This one came out and I think and it was an Amazon Prime original, so I don't really think it got a ton of attention. The fabulous godmother. That's what they refer to him in this one. Um 2021, and it starred Camila Cabello. Idina Menzel plays the evil stepmother. Mini Driver's the Queen. It was cute, but I think Billy Porter stole the show, in my opinion, in that version. And again, it was just like all of this magic where you're just like, I will I want that magic, please. <laughs> well, that one I don't I I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah. But there's actually I just remembered I saw a trailer. Well, I saw someone making fun of a trailer of um I think it's like Sneakerella. Oh where, yeah, like, yeah. Well, I said so that one they flipped the gender roles, and that um, it like the guys making sneakers and mm -hmm. 
he goes somewhere and it's a rich family and and, and they make sneakers and um I would have to watch it but I think I'm trying to remember there's a the girls is from a rich family of like a rich uh sneaker empire and he makes his sneakers and I think he goes to a ball, he loses a sneaker, the girl finds it, she's trying to find who the sneaker belongs to, and then she ends up with him. I think from the trailer, well, one is sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> and two, um, they flip the gender roles in that, um, in, in that the girl it was looking for the guy like the guy loses the sneaker yeah and so the girl is looking for him right yeah. as opposed to the, the other way around and then there's there's still the wealth dynamic in that you have this rich family that makes sneakers right right so the wealth dynamic is there and then um and it's the girl chasing the guy yeah right and everything is centered around the like the movie is centered around this rich family, you know, that makes sneakers. So I think from what I saw, like it was kind of cheesy, like, okay, sneakers, you know, they yeah, got all yeah. ethnic and hip hop, but You're right. <laughs> but they flipped the gender roles. Yeah. And not just the girl looking for the guy, as opposed to the guy looking for the girl. So uh, I thought that was an interesting trailer. That and sounds like fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's also just... Disney, I think. Sneakerella, I think. Yeah. I'll have to check it out because I do like it when stories kind of take a different twist, right? Like like we mentioned earlier, there's so many iterations of the Cinderella story, but it is always the girl being rescued. It's never like that's mm -hmm. the root of the story every single time. The girl gets rescued by this beautiful handsome charming prince and in the in the 1950s version he literally is called prince charming like <laughs> he has no name he is prince charming <laughs> at least in the brandy version he has a name and it's prince christopher but like <laughs> this nameless man will save you from your horrible life like yeah. <laughs> um yes please no i'm just kidding <laughs> mentioned that I am now a contributor to Jennifer Magazine, so I want to tell you a little bit about the publication. Jennifer Magazine supports a strong community of women and non-binary people who are challenging the status quo of ageism, choosing conscious consumption over status seeking, supporting brands that align with their values of inclusion, stepping into the empowerment found in self-expression, and talking about it. If you're tired of reading publications that seem to miss the mark when it comes to coverage of women, aging and the gender binary publications that are rooted in internalized racism and misogyny then jennifer magazine is the publication for you the publisher of jennifer magazine was once told that there's concern that jennifer magazine misses the mark that it's not something people are asking for and you know what it's hard to ask for something when you don't know that something has been missing from your life. You can read Jennifer Magazine at jennifermag.com. There you can purchase monthly issues or even join their annual subscription and receive exclusive discounts. Do you get really excited that your favorite book was adapted for screen only to watch it and feel completely let down? Are you a person who refuses to watch the screen adaptation because you know the movie God's got it wrong? I'm Julia Washington, host of Jelly Pops Book Club, where we read book to screen adaptations and compare them to their screen counterparts. We've covered books like Normal People by Sally Rooney, Water for Elephants, and Are You There, God? It's me, Margaret. We even host a live monthly book club where we have read books like The Other Black Girl, The Joy Luck Club, and The Sun is Also a Star. Sometimes we even discuss books we wish would be adapted, offer suggestions on what needs to stay, and who should be cast. So if you're someone who thinks, I can't believe they did this to this book, or screams at a screen about the changes that make no sense at all, then this might be the show for you. 
You can find Jelly Pop's book club on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or visit our website, popculturemakesmejealous.com. This story of Cinderella is interesting because it's this young girl being rescued by love, right? Like, love will save all. Um, there's this author, Colette Dowling, who wrote a book on women's fear and independence and this unconscious desire to be taken care of by someone else. And as women grow older, this her her hypothesis is, is that this complex grows and she named this the Cinderella complex based on this on this story. So I kind of want to talk about this complex a little bit and how we how if at all we've witnessed it in real life. Like I know I joke that I'm tired of paying my own bills. Where's 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 my sugar daddy? Where's the my opportunity to be a trophy wife? But I don't actually mean it because it's like I like having my own money. <laughs> but what do you think about that? Like what do you think about that complex? Have you seen have you seen that manifest in real life before? I wouldn't say all women in general. Mm -hmm. I think and when did that come out that was oh thank you I forgot to mention that that mm -hmm. she wrote I think the book came out in 1980 yeah see that's reflective of the time yeah I think um so that would make sense around the time I think mm -hmm. but I think because of <clears throat> I, I think about it I think because of the Me Too movement and because of the feminist movement, you know, there's more and even the change. I do kind of see the truth in that. Um, I think the changes in, well, women accomplishing more on their own. So women are more, there's more women homeowners. Mm -hmm. more women with high paying jobs um you know there's more uh women that's trying to raise families on their own so there's a there's more financial opportunities for women and there's women are taking advantage of a lot more things mm -hmm. so i i i i think there is a, a shift in more independent women mm -hmm. so and I think it's it's because of uh, it's a lot of different factors, but I think um, the fear of being independent, I I don't see that now to this day. I think there's more there's more women that's trying to be independent, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they want someone to take care of them. I I see the opposite now. You know, especially because of like the Me Too movement and because there's more women owning homes and more women with higher paying jobs and they don't have to depend on on a man or they don't have to depend on anybody. There's more, there's a lot of female entrepreneurs out there. Yeah. There's a lot of female CEOs. Mm -hmm. So I think um, there there is a gender shift in um, financial expectations. Mm -hmm. So I, I see more women trying to be independent yeah um and more women you know trying to take care of themselves so i i see the opposite of that complex uh i but i still think it's like there might still be a sense of like women feeling more tired mm -hmm. because they're because they're working more and they're earning more and it's like i feel there there might be a sense of like i when they need a they need a break every now and then, mm -hmm. but I, I see the opposite of that. Yeah. I think there's women accomplishing more. So I actually don't see a Cinderella complex and that, be, and I think because of that gender shift of more women being leaders, I do see more men being more, um, I don't want to say submissive, mm -hmm. but I think I'm, I'm seeing more men taking the secondary role it's interesting too to your point earlier about how when when you're like 1980s okay that tracks for the time mm -hmm. and when you said that i was like yeah a hundred percent because like duh because in the 60s and the 70s you had more of this like female empowerment movement that was really driven by white feminism um and 
then in the 80s it was sort of like we kind of got back into like this settled and i don't know if it co- if it's a coincidence that coincidence that it coincides with like the reagan era or whatever but it's like you know it kind of settles back into this sort of suburban here's our gender roles but then the women who are striving for more are sort of labeled as like I don't know how to describe it. We talked about it in the working girl episode, uh, on the show. So go listen to that. Cause I go into detail about that, but we recorded that a while ago. So I can't remember all the details right now. Um, but like, to your point about like with the rise of like this next generation of being more, um, having more access to being independent and access to being able to purchase their own homes and access to job opportunities that didn't necessarily exist for our mother's generation. Like, mm-hmm that's huge. That's a big deal. And then having to have those conversations to with, with our children about that, or just in general. And I think your point when you were, when you mentioned me too, like the rise of women feeling co- confident, there's still backlash, but just, I don't think that women would have stepped forward 20 years ago to say, Hey, this is how I was harmed because of, I mean, there's still sometimes fear, but we see it more now. Like there's more support now for someone who stands up and says, this person was a harmful person to me. And there isn't the immediate like, oh, this slut said some exact was awful to her. Now there's like, no, we believe her and we're going to support her through that, which didn't exist 20 years ago. And I think like, I think like, while there's still a lot of hurdles to jump, it's just really fascinating to see now when you look at the concept of being rescued, it's not always, it's not always rooted in a fear of independence for women, right? Like I know, and it's general, like back to the whole generational thing. I don't know if you're watching, if you ever watched sex in the city and if you are watching the new reboot of it, but um, I have a TV watching group that we are watching it and we were all kind of like angry about, this season two, but Nicole Ari Parker's character's husband says to her, cause she's this big documentarian. She's gorgeous. Of course, cause she's just a beautiful person. Um, but she needs $25,000 to finish her film, her documentary and her husband's wealthy. And he's like, I'll just give you the $25,000. And she looks at him and she's like, thank you. No, because that's an easy fix. You use your money for something else. I have leads on how I can get this money. So <clears throat> they're both successful in their re- retro- in their respective fields. And his mind is like, oh, I'll just give you the money. So whatever problem I have right now can be solved because he's trying to find his tie. And she's like, mm-hmm. no, you're not solving this problem for me. I want to do it this way. And, and it's not, uh, she's not resentful about him asking the question. She's not like angry with him about offering the money. She's just like, thank you. No. (laughs) (laughs) Whereas I think if that scene played out 25 years ago, there would have been all of this like resentment of like, how dare he offer? Like, I am an independent woman. I can do this on my own. And in this, in this 2023 version, it's no, I've got it. Thank you. Bye. And then they move on about on their day. And I just, it's probably the only thing I liked about season, (laughs) season two so far, (laughs) because she was, she asserted herself and he respected that. And I was like, thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I think that there is, there is a shift in you know, women being more confident and then there's a shift in men accepting that. Yeah. So I think, I don't even know if there is a still some, a Cinderella complex at all. I'd be curious I mean, to I, see I an updated love, version of this yeah. book. Sorry, go ahead. I cut you off. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, I mean, I want to, it's like, I feel that way too. Like, I wish I want to be taken care of. You know, I want a sugar daddy, but then it's like, no, but I want to make decisions too. I don't want to, yeah. you know, give you all the power. Like I right. want the power too. Right. Like you give give me your credit card. I will control your credit card. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's, just, it's just like, no, you don't control. Like, no, I will make the decisions. And so it's it's like every day I feel like I wish someone, oh, I wish I had someone with a limited money and you know, you could do all the work. And I'm, but I'm like, no, I want to do the work too. So I don't really think it's, I don't think it's, I don't know if it exists anymore. 
Yeah, I would be curious. Complex. Really, it's a thing to think about it. it. Or if it does, I think it's more on the men in that. Mm-hmm. You know, um, yeah. Especially, you know, I, I know what I'm about to say is controversial, but I find that men are a little bit more feminized now these days. But I think because of, you know, the feminization of men, <clears throat> I think, you know, they're the ones they're more likely want to be taken care of and you know they want to live with the wealthy woman and they they marry the wealthy woman for her money and, mm-hmm. and things like that so yeah yeah there's actually another scene in a later uh, a later scene in episode two or maybe it is episode one I don't know where one of the characters <clears throat> is dating somebody and she learns like all these things about him that are kind of a red flag. And then he comes to her with an investment opportunity and she's like, no, you do not get to have my money. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, I, I mean, as much as there are problems with the new, with the reboot of um, sex in the city, there are moments where you're just like that, that scene wouldn't have played out like that if this were 25 years ago which is fine. It happens. I really love earning my own money. I really love working hard. I just hate working hard. And then the company that I work for is just like, yeah, that's okay. And you're just like, uh, okay. Thank you for devaluing me. Like that's the part I hate, Mm -hmm. but I like the feeling of having accomplished something that was a challenge. And then there's a, there's like a self-satisfaction there. I love that feeling. And I don't get that feeling when I clean the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be proud of yourself and say, hey, I cleaned the kitchen. Hey, it looks, wow, this house looks clean. I did that. Yeah, yeah. And you find your own satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want to touch on about Cinderella before we close out? I'm wondering if like the stepmother's family overall was maybe poor and so they went to the ball because there's this rich handsome prince Mm. yeah i think there's a lot of like hidden messages in cinderella and definitely in the brandy cinderella they did they definitely went multi-ethnic yeah but um maybe a little too much so (laughs) now that i think about (laughs) it but um they think they overdid it with the races but with the diversity but i think um how this story is we're still talking about it to this day and it's been over 50 60 70 years we're still talking about it to this day and we're still trying to replay it yeah yeah for sure (laughs) gabrielle thank you so much for your time i appreciate you you. i know we're on different discussions i love it we gotta and do this again for sure <laughs> for sure and i know that you're in a different time zone than me so i know it's always whenever someone's in a different time zone it's always it always i always appreciate it a little bit more because that time zone change like that time difference is real <laughs> yes <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find you and support your work yes so my company is a step ahead tutoring services so if you're looking for uh, one-on-one tutoring, test prep, college counseling, editing and proofreading, um, I also might be dabbling into tutor consultation. So if you're a tutor oh. or you're looking to be a tutor and you want some guidance on how to do that, you can holler at me. My website is www.astepaheadtutoringservices.com. Uh, You could also find me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Eventbrite, WhatsApp, YouTube. So just type in a step ahead tutoring services and my name will pop up. Look for the pencil logo with the gray and black tip. You will find me there on social media as well. I also want to shout out my podcast. It is called Hot Topics. So we cover a lot of educational topics there. So it's about education, it's about empowerment, it's about self-care, it's having real dialogue about these common issues. And check it out on your favorite podcast platform. It is called Hot Topics. Again, it is under my company, A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. So whatever your favorite platform is, just type in A Step Ahead Tutoring Services. 
hot topics will pop up check out my podcast as well on your favorite platform yes and we'll make sure that we link your website in the show notes so it makes it easy for everyone to find you Cinderella is one of those stories that I think is so ingrained into our psyche that we may not even realize how it affects our beliefs about relationships. I want to thank my guest again for coming back. It's always fun when people who have been here before come back a second time or a third time or a fourth time. Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous is produced and edited by me, your host, Julia Washington. And if you're new around here, I'm a biracial writer and podcast host based in California. When I'm not facilitating the Jelly Pops Book Club, recording this podcast, painting greeting cards, pouring literary inspired candles, or co-hosting with Natalie Katona, I am teetering on existential dread and trying to convince my dog to snuggle. If you can't get enough of this show, we are on Patreon. Over there, you will find bonus episodes, episodes with bonus content baked right in. And every other month, we host a happy social hour to discuss some pop culture highlights. This will be back in January. In December, we are taking the month off from all of our social events that we do either in person or online. We also offer other tiers as well, but the Jelly Pop Studio audience gets you access to everything that I just mentioned. If you're not ready to commit to us, well, that's no problem. You can still join us for free by joining our community. You still get the extras. They just don't happen as often as if you're a paid member. If you enjoyed this episode, share it with your friend. Share it with a loved one. Share it with your enemy. Just share it. Or, you know, share it with the share it on social media and tag us. We'd love to know who's tuning in and what you thought of this episode. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Until next time. Bye.